my name is Carney, and today we'll be taking a look at all the teasers for the highly anticipated upcoming Roblox game Ecos La Brea, as well as trying to decipher what some of it might mean for the full release of the game. Now, I would like to stress that this is my first YouTube video, so any mistakes I make and any improvements that could be made, please let me know in the comments. I'll be viewing these previews in order from the oldest to the newest, however the trailer will be included last, meaning our first preview will be this video right here. In this video, we can see a saber-toothed tiger walking across the screen with birds singing in the background. We also hear a low rumbling sound coming from the saber. Whether or not these sounds will make their way into the game is against me, but I think it will be pretty great if they do, because it definitely sets an environment. In the next shot, we see four direwolf skins, Arid, Basil, Shtism, and Ashen. I cannot pronounce Shtism. <laughs> These direwolf skins are great in my opinion as they fit the setting very well. I personally think that the direwolf skins will have a big part to play when the game is released, having to camouflage into the surroundings as best you can in order not to be spotted. This means that players with the leucistic skin may have a tricky time hunting, but will only know when the full game is released. The big part of this image that I cannot skip is the emotes. We see a wolf standing, laying, sitting, and one wolf stalking. I'm hoping that this game will still include emotes like playbow, tail wag, and basic expressions like is in its previous successor, Cenotoke Survival. Next up, and I find this very interesting, we have a bison. And not only is this photo great, props to whoever took it, but the caption provided above the image stands out to me. Pio, I butchered that, made a statement saying that the moon will light up the sky, rendering night vision unnecessary. Whether or not this only applies for herbivores, I have no clue, but I'm glad that the nights will be bright enough, giving us no reason to use night vision. Now for our much loved saber tooth tigers. This image displays three sabers, one is stalking, one is laying, and one is standing. And, call me crazy, but I think these are three separate skins. Not only do their pelts seem slightly different to each other colour-wise, but their facial patterns are very different. Moving on to this shot, we have the Ferris Ucus Ex Ecos Ferus Occidentalis. I cannot pronounce that, otherwise known as the Western Horse. There are five different coat colours displayed in this image, along with two emotes being showcased. I'm not sure if the mare and colt will each have their own defining feature, but I think that they most likely will in order to keep track of genders within the herd. So the two emotes, one being a horse laying down, two being a horse grazing, and three if you could count the standing animation about grazing. In a recent Q&A, it was mentioned that the map will be modifiable when it comes to eating, meaning you can literally eat the grass and it will despawn. A good example of this is in the game Sonora, which also features the ancient horse. Now we have our hunky boys yet again, the bison. <laughs> this photo depicts both male and female coat variations. I can tell this because of the size of the horns and the back lump, as in nature it was more common for the male bison to be larger in both size and with their horns. The coat variations that we see appear to be a dark, more desaturated coat, while the other is more saturated. In this photo we can also see bison's laying emote, which in my opinion is very accurate. Again, we have the saber-toothed tiger, this time among a field of golden poppies doing what appears to be yawning. I'm personally not sure as to whether or not if this is a yawn, it will be an idle animation or a separate emote that you can trigger. However, this emote could totally just be a broadcast with audio included. Okay, Edda Sakani here, it was definitely a yawn. Uh, when I was extracting the file, it said yawn, so that confirms my theory. On to the Ecos La Brea soundtrack. This piece of music will be in the trailer, which you will see by the end of the video, please stay tuned. And this is a musical masterpiece, in my opinion. Whoever made this song did a great job. If 
the Eco Snobrea soundtrack does get a feature in the game, which I expect it will, it will probably be in the main menu, as forcefully including the song with the gameplay, unless it's a toggle option, could ruin the entire realistic and immersive feel that games like these try to accomplish. Turning our attention back towards the direwolf, two skins have been made, both for melanistic and leucistic variation. The leucistic direwolf features blue eyes, a light creamy coloured coat and a pink nose, which I find adorable whereas the melanistic wolf comes with beautiful yellow eyes and a brown slash burn looking coat. Tigress, the developer responsible for these designs, did a fantastic job. Despite having searched, I have not been able to find a developer responsible for the default wolf skins, though I do think they did a good job nonetheless. Now we see the preview stepping into a more environmental side of things. Riparian Woodlands says as follows. In the stream, skylies and wetlands of La Brea, Many water alliant life can be found. Towering trees like the Arroyo Willow and Western Sycamore litter skies or shrubs such as Elderberry and Tallbush Little the Woodlands. I'm not entirely sure if the statement about water alliant life should be taken seriously, but I do think seeing some sea creatures in the area like fish would be an awesome addition, especially if they are huntable. I expect these plants will be edible for creatures such as the Western Horse and Bison. For the next biome, we have the Hillsau Prairie. The coastal prairies of La Brea are dominated by grasses and flowering plant life. Fragrant flowers such as lilacs, poppies and tarweed can be found blanketing the hillsides. This location is beautiful, the flowers definitely make it stand out. I expect the California lilac will be edible for both the western horse and bison, as in real life they are safe to consume for most animals. However, for the tarweed I am not sure, as online I found that it can cause liver infection in horses. But I do expect that it will still be a consumable plant for herbivores. I think this location will be primarily where herbivores will reside, as there is food and spotting threats seems easy. Now we have the Sage Chaparral Shrub. Chaparral is dominated by shrub-sized plant life that can tolerate dry and nutrient-poor soil. Shrubs such as chamise and buckwheat grow in dense thickets that provide habitats for small animals. This place just looks like a herbivore's heaven. There's food everywhere, however, since it's a dense environment, they may have trouble spotting threats. Now, as for the small animals claim, I'm not entirely sure if we, the player, will be able to play as a dwarf pronghorn, rabbit, or even the rattlesnake. Though, as we'll see later in the trailer, there are AI versions of them. Anyways, going off of the statement they made about small animals using the shrubbery for shelter, this might mean that these AI animals can be found here, making it a good spot to go when hunting. Here we have the Oak Parkland, and thank goodness the Broken Bone will be a feature in this game because this location looks to have many cliff sides. I'm not sure if fall damage will be implemented into the game, but if it does, then we'll need to learn a way to navigate this location safely. Oak Parkland consists of many species of evergreen oak that are resident to the dry climate of La Brea. The coast live oak makes up the majority of the canopy in this biome, among the understory foliage such as juniper and sagebush. Despite it mentioning that there will be food sources for herbivores here, I don't expect they will be visiting often, as this place looks to be a place where mainly sabres and dyers will reside. I'm saying this going off the fact that in numerous videos on their Ecos La Brea channel, it states in the description, Sabretooth's cats and direwolves prowl the woodlands, while horses and bison roam the prairies. Pine juniper woodlands also seems like it will be mainly home to the dyers and sabres, however I expect the herbivores will also roam there occasionally given that California junipers will be scattered throughout, and it may be fairly easy trying to spot threats. Pine woodland occurs at high elevations, characterised by wisely spaced evergreen trees and shrubs. These woodlands were more widespread throughout Los Angeles Basin during the cooler climate of the last ice age, but have since retreated up the hills today. From reading that, we understand that these woodlands will usually occur at high altitude, which I find to be a unique quality. The Bushfire Chaparral. <laughs> now this definitely looks like a place that you would find rattlesnakes. A scorched path of land recovering from a devastating wildfire. Chaparral's benefit from bushfires because shrubs such as chamise rely on fire to germinate their seeds. New signs of life are already sprouting from the ashes. The mention of bushfire sounds interesting, but if the bushfires do occur in game then I think that would be a very nice addition, as it would force animals that inhabited the area to relocate. Moving on from the biomes for now, we see a western horse holding a plant. Charlie, one of the developers on the game, stated that this feature could also be used for the role-playing side of things. 
other thing he mentioned is not only will you be able to carry plants, but flowers too. I'm not sure if carrying these props will get in the way of any vocal expressions, however. Now the last thing before we get into the trailer. We have a video that seems to be displaying the direwolf's idle animation. In this video, we can also see butterflies in the background, which probably don't have a significant part to play within the game, but is most likely just there for effect. But I think it's a nice addition. The location that this is filmed seems to be Hillside Prairie, meaning the butterflies will be found there. Finally, for the part you've been waiting for, the trailer. La Brea, the world sunken into the pits of time. Discover this prehistoric ecosystem in a revolutionary new light through an incredible open world simulation of our past. Horses and bison roam the prairies, while dire wolves and saber tooth cats stalk the woods. Hunt, migrate, and survive across prehistoric California. 20,000 years ago. Hone your instincts by completing tasks, earning tracks that can be used to purchase brand new appearances for the various in-game species. Experience the Ice Age megafauna like never before, and the Echos La Brea coming to Roblox in 2024. There was a lot to go through in this trailer, one of the things being what seemed to be a mammoth skeleton at the beginning. So I'm pretty sure Ecos Librea takes place sometime after the Ice Age, so this makes sense, and I don't expect the mammoth to be making a grand appearance like many players are hoping. Next, we see a shot of one of the AIs, this one being a dwarf pronghorn. They would of course be huntable. We see numerous AI appearances throughout the trailer, the next one being an AI rabbit in the jaws of a direwolf. The next shot that we will go over is, um, a poop. As gross as this may be, I have a feeling that these animals will leave these behind every now and again, once they're full enough of something. I'm just hoping it doesn't come with an animation. <clears throat> Moving on, we can see a direwolf tracking a western horse. The trail the western horse has tells how recent the scent is and its status, in this case being healthy. We can also see a little rabbit icon, this might mean a rabbit is close by, it might be marking the rabbit's location, who knows, but I know that this will most likely be a helpful attribute when hunting. In the next clip we have a western horse being latched onto by an entire pack of direwolves. Rest in peace horse, fly high. We can see the horse's HUD HUD in the bottom right. And I think I know what each of them might mean. But the top green bar displays a fish slash meat icon, meaning fish may be a huntable asset going back on my previous statement about the riparian woodlands. This bar probably displays hunger, the blue one below that displaying thirst, the bar below that featuring a lightning bolt <laughs> being stamina, and the intercon one below that most likely shows oxygen considering the bubble icon. This means that you could drown. The big circle on the very right of the HUD, I think, shows health. The smaller the circle is, the closer to you are to death. I made this conclusion by considering the previous clip of the direwolf as the circle is full, while the clearly injured western horse is not. Another thing that we can see in this clip is how the horse will retaliate against being latched onto. By the end, we can see for a split second what that will look like and how to do it basically by pressing space when the circle is in the smaller circle. 
The next shot that I would like to talk about is the part where the narrator states that you can gain tracks, which I assume is the currency that will be used by completing tasks. I was super excited when I heard that there will be tasks as it gives you something to work on. It basically sets you a goal to complete, and doing that as a pack and or herd sounds like it will be a lot of fun. Now onto the last thing. What the hell is that thing? I mean, it looks like a bird, but maybe I'm talking nonsense and it's actually just a horse. I guess we'll only know when the game is released. Oh, and also we see a yawn animation again. So there we have it. Those are all the previews so far for the upcoming Roblox game, Ecos Abrea. Again, this is my first YouTube video, so if there is anything I can improve upon and anything you'd like me to do a video on next, please let me know down below. Also, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to anyone who has watched this to the end. It means a lot. I hope it wasn't boring for you.